Hello, chemistry students. Today we will be performing our chromatography experiment. Chromatography involves the distribution of different compounds in a mixture between a stationary phase and a mobile phase. The separation process depends on how strongly the compounds adsorb to the stationary phase and how soluble they are in the mobile phase. This process depends on the relative polarities of the compounds. In part one of this experiment, we're going to use thin layer chromatography or TLC to separate and identify compounds in a mixture. In part two of the experiment, we'll use column chromatography to separate a mixture of two compounds and then check the purity of those two compounds that we separated using TLC. Let's get started. In part A of this experiment, we're going to use thin layer chromatography or TLC to separate a mixture of three compounds fluorine, fluorinol, and fluorinone. And then based on the results of our known samples, we'll be able to determine which compounds are in our unknown sample. We are going to start by spotting 2% solutions of each of our compounds on our TLC plate. So we have our 2% fluorine solution, our 2% fluorinol solution, our 2% fluorinone solution, our unknown number two in which we need to identify which compounds are in it, and our reference mixture which contains fluorine, fluorinol, and fluorinone. This is our TLC plate and it consists of silica gel on an aluminum backing. And we're going to spot each of our compound solutions one centimeter up from the bottom of the TLC plate using a micro cap or a very thin capillary tube. After spotting all of our samples on our TLC plate, we need to prepare a development chamber. And this is our development chamber. And the first thing we need to do is place a piece of filter paper to serve as a liner inside of our development chamber. Once moistened with our solvent, the filter paper liner will help saturate the development chamber with our solvent vapors. The solvent that we will be using for this experiment is methylene chloride. We're going to transfer approximately five milliliters of methylene chloride to our development chamber while making sure to completely saturate our filter paper with the methylene chloride. We'll then place our TLC plate inside the development chamber and allow the TLC plate to develop. We'll remove the TLC plate once the solvent front is within one to two centimeters of the top of the TLC plate. And you need to remember to mark the position of the solvent front on the TLC plate as soon as you remove the TLC plate from the development chamber. This way you can calculate your RF values. Once our TLC plate has completely dried, we'll place it in an iodine chamber until the spots begin to appear. This is our fully developed TLC plate. You can now calculate the RF values for each of our three compounds. You can also identify the compound or compounds that were in our unknown mixture. This concludes part A of this experiment.
In part D of this experiment, we're going to use column chromatography to separate a mixture of fluorine and fluorinone. We'll then test the purity of our separated compounds using TLC and melting points. Before we can run our column, we need to assemble the following glassware and liquids. We need two pasture pipettes with bulbs. We need four test tubes that have been labeled numbers one through four, which will be used to collect the fractions off of our column. We need nine milliliters of hexane. We need two milliliters of 70% hexane, 30% acetone. We need two milliliters of acetone. We need 0 0.3 milliliters of our fluorine fluorinone mixture. And we need a TLC plate that's been marked three times for spotting. We will next prepare our column. We will now prepare a chromatography column packed with alumina adsorbent. We first need to take a pasture pipette and place a loose plug of cotton in the wide open end of our pipette. We'll then use a copper wire to gently push that plug of cotton all the way down to the end of our pipette. You wanna be sure not to pack the cotton too tightly as it could restrict the flow of our solvent through the column. Once the plug of cotton is in the end of our pipette, we're going to take a metal file and score our pipette about one centimeter below the cotton plug. We'll then place our thumbs on either side of our score mark and push quickly. We then need to transfer our alumina adsorbent to our column. And this is the alumina that we will be using. And we're going to transfer 1.25 grams of alumina adsorbent to our column using a micro funnel. And this micro funnel is just a disposable plastic pipette that's had the tip cut off and the bulb cut in half. And we'll place the tip of our micro funnel in the open end of our column. We'll then transfer our 1.25 grams of alumina to our column using the micro funnel. Once we've transferred our alumina to our column, we need to gently tap our column to make sure that our alumina is tightly packed inside the column. This is our chromatography column. And we need to clamp our column so that the tip of the column is just above the test tube that will be collecting our fraction. We have now completed the preparation of our chromatography column. Before running the column, I would like to briefly go over the procedure. We'll first add three milliliters of hexane to moisten the column. And once moistened, the column must not be allowed to run dry. We'll then add our fluorine fluorinone mixture solution and collect the eluent in test tube number two. We'll add one milliliter of hexane and when the surface of the liquid reaches the top of the alumina, we'll add five more milliliters of hexane. As fluorine elutes off the column into test tube number two, we'll need to use several drops of acetone to wash the solid fluorine off the tip of our column. After we've added all of the hexane, we'll switch to the more polar solvent of 70% hexane 30% acetone. Just before the yellow band of fluorinone reaches the bottom of our column, we'll place test tube number three under the column to collect the fluorinone eluent.
We will next test the purity of our fluorine and fluorinone fractions using thin layer chromatography or TLC. We're going to need to spot our fluorine fraction several times on the TLC plate in order to have enough sample to see the spots. We also need to spot a reference mixture containing both fluorine and fluorinone. And we'll spot our samples on a TLC plate using a micro cap and we'll develop our TLC plate and visualize the spots using iodine. This is our fully developed TLC plate for our spotted fluorine fraction, our fluorinone fraction, and our fluorine fluorinone reference mixture. We next need to evaporate the solvent from test tube number two and test tube number three by placing the test tubes in a warm water bath and using a stream of air. Once the solvent has evaporated from our test tubes, we can collect the solid fluorine and the solid fluorinone and determine the melting points. We've collected the solid fluorine and fluorinone after the evaporation of the solvent from test tubes number two and three. We'll now determine the melting point of the fluorine and fluorinone that we separated using column chromatography. This concludes part D of this experiment. Okay, students, we've now practiced performing thin layer chromatography and column chromatography, which are two of the most widely used chromatographic techniques in organic chemistry. This concludes our chromatography experiment. Thank you for joining me for this laboratory.